I was away this weekend. I had to rent a car. I'm the worst driver ever. I hate doing that. I got pulled over by a cop. He asked if I knew why he was pulling me over. I was like, no. I just looked up from my phone and there you were. <laughs> If you're going to offer a cop a threesome to get out of a ticket, make sure the other passenger in your car is also into it. My mom is still pretty pissed. I just saw this story. I saw that a guy in Finland just got a speeding ticket for $150,000. Because apparently in Finland they take you according to your salary. And this guy was the CEO of Nokia. $150,000. That just makes me want to go to Finland. I would get pulled over and I'd be like, you owe me $80. <laughs> and I could use the cash. I don't make a lot of money right now. I can't afford to live in a nice neighborhood. I live in a really bad area. Like it's so bad where I live. There was a police raid on a crack house down the street for me a couple weeks ago. The police got the wrong address. They still got a crack house. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's a big drug neighborhood, which is usually fine. You know, I mind my own business. The drug dealers mind their own business. No big deal. But I recently changed my cell phone plan, and now I only get reception by my window, and I live on the third floor of my building. So every time I go to make a phone call now, I have to lean out the window like this. And there's always a guy with a crowd gathered around, like, I told you that white bitch is a snitch. It's not gonna end well. And my dad freaks out that I live in a bad neighborhood, because I grew up in a really safe area, a suburb in Massachusetts, where there was nothing going on. Like, there was no, no diversity either. And in my graduating class in high school, we had one black kid. One black kid. And he, no one committed crimes, especially not him. He was way too identifiable. <laughs> If someone went to describe him, they were like, I don't know, he was uh, 5'10", 150 pounds, he was black. The cops would be like, Brian? <laughs> we'll go pick him up right now. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> and even though there's nothing going on in this town, my dad would still keep the key to our house, the spare key, in one of those fake rocks. Do you remember those? And then he would just bury it away under the bushes. So burglars couldn't get in, neither could I. <laughs> Safe at this point. But then what he would do is he would take a fake key and put that one under the doormat. Because it wasn't enough for him to stop the burglar, he really wanted to mess with his head. <laughs> Let the guy go, Dad, now you're being a dick. <laughs> he was serious about security, though. He had a gun in his bedside table when I was growing up. But we also had cats, so we had a water gun on top of his bedside table. We went through a lot of cats. And one very wet, confused burglar. I was like, what was that? It was weird. a bad neighborhood. I don't even have health insurance right now. I'm one of the only people. I still don't have health insurance, which I think is fine. It's not bad, right? Like, if I have to get anything important, like, if I have to get birth control pills or anything like that, I go to Planned Parenthood, which is usually fine. The last time I went, though, there was a sign out front that said, please use rear entrance. I know, I tried it, and I was like, wow, I'll take the pills. Oh my god. Not falling for that again, you guys. <laughs> and I'm trying to be healthier. I'm trying not to drink right now. I had a rough night on New Year's. This is how you can tell you've had way too much to drink. It's when you can't get comfortable at night, no matter what position you're trying to get to sleep in, and then you realize it's because you're on the curb. <laughs> I'm trying to not really drink right now, and I didn't realize guys hate it when you're a girl who doesn't drink. Right? I constantly have to reassure them, I will still make bad decisions. <laughs> you got 
got this, unfortunately. <laughs> the last time I went out drinking with my friends, this guy came up to me and he goes, I might not be the best looking guy in here, but I'm the only one talking to you. <laughs> I was like, did you just insult both of us? Does that work? I mean, it did, but that's... <laughs> Because you have to go out and meet people, you know? You can online date, but that's that can be a nightmare. Like, the time I tried, I've tried that a couple times. One time I was talking to a guy, he was just lying. Like, he said he was an artist, I thought that was really cool. And then it came out that he worked at Subway. <laughs> Sandwich artist does not count, you guys. I met another guy who said that he, um, he said he went to Harvard, which is great, but then he worked as a cashier at Target which is already weird, and then when I met him, he kept using the word supposedly. <laughs> right? So, like, either you're lying, or something really bad happened along the way that brought you to where you are after Harvard. Like, if I told you guys I went to Harvard, you'd be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> or you'd be like, what happened? How did you end up here? Like, I'm going to start lying in the opposite direction to make it seem like I'm doing better in life than I'm doing. Like, I'm going to stop telling people I went to college and start telling people I went to jail. And people will be like, you are doing amazing right now. You are killing it, whatever you're doing. Stay on that track. But one guy I ended up dating for a little while. It started out really good. He was really cute. He had long hair. I was getting into it. And then on our third date, he showed up in pigtails. <laughs> They were braided? I was like, is that Pippi Longstocking? <laughs> no, a bun would have been so much better. They were braided pigtails. I was so worried because it was early on. We hadn't had sex yet or anything. And then I was like, what is going to be the situation down here? <laughs> I'm just saying, if that's Corn Road, I'm out. <laughs> so it looks like you're smuggling Coolio down there. <laughs> it's just confusing. And he was such a hippie, he was a vegetarian. And vegetarians, I don't know if you guys know this about yourselves, but you are pretty <laughs> fucking annoying. <laughs> this guy was the worst, he wouldn't even eat at McDonald's, which I guess you'd think would make sense because he's a vegetarian, but he wouldn't even eat the french fries. He said they had meat in them. Really, the burgers don't even have meat in them. <laughs> Try some McNuggets, I think they're rubber bands, I don't know. But he was so preachy, he would make me watch videos of animals and what happened to them before they become food. I'm watching these videos, they're so sad. I became a vegetarian for like two hours. And then a meat lover's pizza showed up and it was over. I couldn't... I have no willpower. The only time I wanted to be a vegetarian is when you wanted a blowjob. I just wanted to be like, oh, no meat. Your rules, buddy. <laughs> but it had started well. It ended really badly. He ended. He cheated. He was cheating on me. I found out, which isn't, uh, which isn't fun. He said he was a sex addict. That was his excuse. Which I don't know if I believe that. Aren't you just an asshole at that point? <laughs> but he stuck to it. He said he was a sex addict. He started going to meetings, which just seems like a good place to meet someone. <laughs> He even went to a sex therapist, and she told him he had to stop masturbating. And he said, for how long? And she said, at least until you leave my office. <laughs> you have a problem. Oh my God. You know they have anonymous programs for everything, too. It's not just, like, alcohol or sex addicts. It's everything. They have Narcotics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous. Uh, they have OA, which is Overeaters Anonymous. That's the only one that I don't really understand. Right, like, I'm sure it's an amazing program, I just, I don't get the anonymous part of that one. <laughs> just think about it, when the meeting lets out, I think the cat's out of the bag, is all I'm saying. Bunch of 400 pound people with gravy stains leave a church basement, no one's confused. They should call it OO, oh, oh, like Overeaters Obvious. I go, oh, okay. I've been dating this guy recently. I was dating a guy and I went to his house for the holidays and 
I found out everyone kept commenting on the fact that I looked like his mom. Which is weird. I didn't know what to say. People kept telling me that I looked like his mom, and I should have just smiled politely, I guess. But instead, I said, well, I guess the Oedipus complex is alive and well. <laughs> Which is basically me saying, hey, I think my boyfriend wants to bang his mom. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Nice to meet you. I know it's a good way to come into a family. The guy I dated before that was an ex-heroin addict. That's not good. Right? I thought he was doing better. He was going on job interviews during the day. I was excited for him. You know, I bought him a tie, and he just tied it around his arm. It's <laughs> a bad sign. The guy I was dating uh, was also a, a musician. He was also in a band. And guys, when they're in a band, they tend to think it's a really good idea to sing one-on-one -on -one to you. I don't know if anyone's had this happen. I don't mean to be mean, because it's a really nice thought. It's just the worst thing that could possibly happen. It's so awkward, you're alone in a room with a guy and a guitar. God forbid he looks into your eyes, you have nowhere to go. You're just like, oh, do I really sway and get really into this? Like, hold up a lighter? Shout suggestions? Free word! This end? It's all that goes to my head, like, I did not buy a ticket to your one-man show, but a refund would be amazing. Because to me it's the exact same thing as if I went out with a guy, and then I took him back to my apartment, and I started doing stand-up comedy one-on-one -on -one to him. How awkward would that be? When we get back to my place and I turn out all the lights, he's like, alright, that's what I'm talking about. And then I get a spotlight somehow, he's like, what is happening? Then what do you even say? Just look him right in the eyes and go, anyone single in the house? Yeah, well, who's getting late tonight? Not this guy. Not... Where are you going? This date's not over. But dating's the worst. It's, it's tough. I know that it is, because I see this uh, late-night TV ad that comes out all the time. They're selling a boyfriend pillow. Have you guys seen this? It might be the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's literally a headless torso pillow thing that it comes with a pillow arm that you wrap around yourself because you're lonely and a dress shirt that you're supposed to put on it, which is pretty optimistic, by the way. A dress shirt, in my case, it would be like a wife beater with gravy stains. If I'm lucky. It's so sad as women that this exists. We're resorting to cuddly boyfriend pillows. But I feel like as a guy, that should be encouraging. Right, like, if you're a guy and you're having trouble meeting women, go hang out at the boyfriend pillow store. <laughs> you will clean up, you have a leg up on anything, you have legs that's better than anything they're selling. Run, show that off. You win. My mom, my mom's been divorced three times, that's a lot. I think if you've been divorced three times, your right to vote should be taken away. You're clearly a terrible decision maker. Do your own thing, leave the rest of us alone. We have the upcoming election. I just read this statistic about elections, by the way. It's the more attractive candidate that usually wins the elections. If that's the case, can you explain Congress? Oh my God. What a raggedy looking bunch of people. If they were winning elections, who were they running against? Just bridge trolls? Gremlins? Who was it? George Washington had wooden teeth. Who was he more attractive than? Like a bag of dirt? <laughs> Our presidents are so ugly, we make Halloween masks out of their faces. People use them to rob banks. They scare the shit out of people. The cops show up and they're like, I don't know, you look like Richard Nixon. I just threw up and gave him the money. <laughs> yeah, my mom, she does make some bad decisions. I love her to death, but she smoked cigarettes since she was 17 years old. Never wanted to quit. Never even tried, and I make all the arguments. I'm like, Mom, it is so unhealthy. You're taking 20 years off your life. And she argues back. She's like, yeah, it's the last 10. Those are the worst ones. <laughs> 80 to 90, I don't give a shit. She's a teacher, too. She's a school teacher. She taught English for her whole life. I used to get punished for bad grammar when I was a kid. Like, I would ask, I would be like, Mom, can I sleep over Elizabeth's house? And she'd say, no, but you may have slept over at Elizabeth's house, had you asked correctly. Which is weird as an adult, because some guy will come up to me and be like, yo, can I get them digits? And I'm like, no, but you may have gotten them digits. 
had you asked correctly. <laughs> if she's been a teacher her whole life, you're not allowed to smoke in school anymore if you're a teacher. Not allowed to. I think that's so unfair. You know, now, what are teachers supposed to do after having sex with their students? <laughs> do we have some teachers over here that got awkward on this side? <laughs> My sister, I so appreciate teachers and people who have kids. I'm too lazy to do it. My sister has three kids. And you know, every parent thinks their kids are the smartest kids in the entire world. My sister's the only parent who's like, I don't know about these three. I hope someone can weld or something. She had to sit them down and have that conversation where she's like, you guys know you can be anything you want to be for Halloween. Real life's looking bleak. No. My oldest niece just got extra credit in her class for learning the alphabet backwards. Now there's a teacher who got a DUI, huh? Not even trying to hide it, just teaching the kids the lessons they need in life. Sixth grade's how to cheat on your taxes, why not? You know, some people, though, are probably too lazy to have kids. I know I'm one of them. But I see... Well, because do you see this article that comes out every year uh, on how to not leave your kid in the backseat of your hot car? Every year that article comes out, people forget they fry their kids in the backseat of their cars. So I'm reading an article that gives you tips on how to not do this. I swear to God, the first tip said, leave something important in the backseat of your car. <laughs> your cigarettes? <laughs> You're right though, I didn't even mention a kid. It was like, no, leave your purse or your iPhone or something you really care about. In the backseat of your car, maybe when you realize, oh my god, my iPhone, you'll realize, holy shit, Timmy, oh my god. And now Jenny McCarthy's been telling people how to raise their kids. She's been telling people to not vaccinate them. She says it gives them autism. Which is crazy, because this is the debate. It's doctors, science, and research versus Jenny McCarthy. Who's <laughs> like, um, I've never been to college, but I do have a child, and we've all seen my vagina. I think I rest my case. <laughs> She also dated Jim Carrey for four years when her child was young and impressionable. So she has as much proof that vaccines cause autism as she has that Jim Carrey causes autism. You don't think after a few years of wacky voices and faces, the kid wasn't just like, I think I'm gonna check out for a bit. If I stop talking, will this just go away? Someone have some cards I can count or a map I can stare at? Talking about his ass, give me a phone book, anything. You can stop. But I know, I'm too lazy to have them. I did the laziest thing you could possibly do the other day. I went and got an hour long massage. Yeah. It's the best. The best, the, the place I went, right when I walked in, there was a sign that said, No happy endings. <laughs> got it right out of the way, don't even ask. No happy endings. And I realized I am so lazy that if I were a masseuse, I would be an only happy endings masseuse. That sounds so much easier than rubbing people's backs for an hour each. Oh my god, if someone came up and was like, oh, all right, you can just do this for five minutes, I would pick that every time, you guys. Every time. I'd be like, line them up, I can do 20 of these in two hours. Take the rest of the week off. I got this. Make an assembly line. One hour, true. I think I could. I think I could get through it. My excuse for being lazy, too, is always that I'm traveling. That's always what I say, which, you know, sometimes it's true. I just got back from Canada recently, which is a fun trip. Whenever you travel, people tell you what you have to do in the place you're going. You know, in Canada, it's poutine. Everyone's like, oh, you have to eat the poutine. I didn't know what that was. That sounds filthy, doesn't it? I was like, eat the poutine. Can I just try kissing a girl first? Let me ease my way in. I was also in India. That's
that's a fun trip. It's a huge time change, though, which really messes with you. It's amazing. It's it's so, like, I don't know if you know how big the time change is, though. It's huge. Like, when it's 5 o'clock in New York, in India, it's 1981. <laughs> Pretty much, right? It is confusing. I love going to off-the-beaten-path places, though, especially third-world countries. Because I'm writing a book that is specifically for third-world countries. It's called God's Just Not That Into You. <laughs> In the nonfiction section. <laughs> I have a cruise coming up that I was so excited about. I'm getting a little nervous because there's been all these nightmare stories on cruise ships recently. Last year there was one that lost power for three days. No one could do anything about it. It became this floating outhouse that was unstoppable. I watched the interviews when it docked, and everyone said the same thing. They said we were ankle-deep in raw sewage. I know, I get that a few toilets stop working, but ankle-deep in raw sewage. When disaster strikes, do people just start shitting everywhere? <laughs> and when the boat finally docked, it docked in Alabama, which is one place I feel like people were like, oh, can we just stay on the shitty boat? What happened? <laughs> They said it was everywhere. It was coming down walls and down the hallways. It was like the boat had turned into The Shining. But instead of blood everywhere, it was just shit everywhere. I hope you're enjoying your nachos. Sorry, you guys. I couldn't wrap my brain around it the whole time, too, because I'm like, you guys are on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Just shit off the side of the boat. Why well, was no one thinking that? I was on a cruise ship two years ago where nothing went wrong and people were shitting off the side of the boat. <laughs> I don't know why that was happening. I was in LA too, that's a fun trip. I like to surf, so I like going out there. When you surf, you have to change in and out of your wetsuit at your car and all your clothes pretty much. The last time I was doing that, this kind of homeless guy was watching me change and right when I got my clothes off, he asked me for a dollar. <laughs> I know, I realized I'm the opposite of a stripper. A guy just watched me take my clothes off and was like, you owe me money. <laughs> but I get it out there, especially everyone has fake boobs, everyone has these Barbie doll bodies. And I just read this about fake boobs, by the way. If you have them and you die, if you get cremated, you could explode. <laughs> That is so unfair. That is one more reason for guys to love them. Right when you're alive, you look amazing, and guys can stare at them, and then when you die, you explode? You win. You're better than a Transformer. You're a walking Michael Bay movie. There's boobs and explosions. Walking down the streets. But it's award season out there now. Everyone gets so into that. And I was trying to get into it, and I have such a hard time, because, like, all these people... They're already the high, like, most highly paid, most highly sought after attractive group of people. And we're like, we should give them trophies. They need more. It makes no sense to me. And then when someone gets up and wins an award, they're so thankful to everyone who's helped them along the way. They've had nothing but love and support. Our regular jobs aren't like that. Like, we're not getting anywhere because people are helping us and loving us and supporting us. It's the opposite. You leave a room, people, like, talk shit behind your back. <laughs> they try to backstab you. If there was a regular award show for regular people with regular jobs, we wouldn't go up there with a list of people to thank. We'd go up there with a list of people to tell to go fuck themselves. <laughs> right? I'd be like, a fuck you to Keisha for stealing my PowerPoint presentation <laughs> and taking all the credit. And a fuck you to Bob for stealing my lunch four times a week. <laughs> I've been traveling a lot. I have a friend who always tells me weird things about the places that I'm going. I don't know if anyone knows anyone like this, but like, he always, he knows weird facts about every place. Like, he knows the age of consent in every state. Why do you know that? But I was just up in Wisconsin, and he told me that they had just outlawed necrophilia in Wisconsin. A, why do you know that? And B, that seems like it had to have been outlawed a long time ago, right? That seems like every state should have outlawed that way in the past. So I looked it up and they have recently just outlawed necrophilia in a vote that was five to two. <laughs> two judges were totally on board. They were like, whatever's bringing people to Wisconsin. I mean, just necrophilia, why not hang on to it? 
the story was so creepy. It was this guy who got in trouble because he saw an obituary of a woman, a young girl, uh, like a 20-year-old girl, and she had died, obviously. He thought she was attractive. He wanted to go to the grave and dig her up to have sex with her. And he convinced two of his friends to help him, and they got caught. I couldn't get two friends to drive me to the airport last week, you guys. <laughs> Where does this guy get two friends? And once you're at the point where you're digging bodies out of the grave to have sex with them, I don't think a little law is going to stop you. I think you've made your decision. I have an aunt that I just visited recently. She's in a nursing home, which is a great place, but uh, when you drive in, there's all these signs that say, please drive slowly. And the last time I went to visit, someone had crossed out the R and the V, so it said, please die slowly. <laughs> I know, and the thing about this please too, this nursing home, it's down the street from a funeral parlor, which seems disrespectful, don't you think? The only thing worse would be if there's just a conveyor belt between the two. It's like a luge that shoots him in there at the end of the day. I challenge anyone to try this. Try taking your sick elderly relative to the bank without looking like you're trying to rob her. <laughs> it can't be done. You're like, just sign right here, Nana. It's totally fine. It's, what do you mean? What do you mean, who am I? I'm your niece. You need all of your money. This is legit. Never goes wrong. All right, thank you so much, guys. You've been great.